thanks uh, thanks for joining us today for this session. Um, maybe as a start around, just to get some some background about yourself. Maybe just tell us um, about your younger years. Where were you born? Where did you stay? Where did you go to school? Maybe just just run us through that. Yeah, I was born in Rudepoort, <laughs> suburb of Johannesburg, just about, and uh, grew up there in a very modest uh, neighborhood, a uh, family of four, my mom, my dad, my brother, and myself, I'm the youngest. Uh, high school years, we, we moved closer to the Florida area, and I was uh, fortunate enough to go to uh, on Dekker's work school, and then ended up in the USA as an exchange student for a year, before I went to now UJ, the Rand Afrikaans University then. So yeah, that's my, my journey. Went to church uh, in downtown Redport. Uh, my okay. dad was very involved in church there. Okay. Uh, basically grew up in a very churchy home. Um, and uh, half of my family, uh, the rest of the relatives were also in church with us. So, okay. so my, my younger years have great memories of family, of spirituality, of school, of holidays and funs, uh, fun times and yeah, so so very much a cookie cutter uh, Gautenger. Okay. Um, yeah. So your whole life you've been in, in Gauteng? Very much. You studied, so. so sorry, you just mentioned you studied at, uh, at the old Rao uh, yeah. UJ now. What, uh, what did you study? I'm an accountant, <laughs> studied, okay. studied uh, uh, BCom accounts and uh, pursued the CA course. Uh, did honours there, then went to NISA, did my articles with KPMG, and uh, for the first time in my life, after Varsity, engaged with what seemed to be the outside world. Uh, it was as if the uh, eyelids opened up and uh, you know, the, the, the tunnel vision, and this is after I went to the USA and uh, <laughs> went to school there, uh, Beginning a work life in a very secular world. It was the early 90s. Uh, in fact, uh, my first year of work was 1994, which was groundbreaking in South African history. So a lot of things challenging the country and challenging us and seeing people from different walks of life. Uh, yeah, so very interesting times yeah. to live in. Okay. And now, Rian, what, what, what do you currently do? What, what, what job are you in? I'm currently with uh, a governing body association called FEDSAS, the Federation of Governing Bodies of South African Schools. And we aim to support public schools in this country. Uh, it's a non-profit position. It's a sense of contributing and giving back to the country. Uh, if education does not work in this country, very few other things will work. Okay. And yeah. I always tell people I work with the future because we've got to sustain the future mm. and it's through our children and you know, kind of giving my life uh, in that sense to ensure that public schools, the way it works now, still a safe place for our children to learn, uh, to play, to have friends and be safe and uh, yeah, education is very close to my heart. Okay. Okay. So Rian, maybe let's um, go, go back to your, your younger years you mentioned earlier. And you grew up in a very loving home. It was your your mother, um, your father, and your brother. Maybe just give us some more detail about your parents. You know what what impact did they play in your life? Maybe let's start with your mother, and then we can move over to your father. Just the impact they had on you as a child, and and maybe things that you remember that you still you know that you still use in your everyday life as a you know as a father, just as a as a husband to to your wife. Uh, my my mom was uh, the middle child of five and came out of a, a pastor's house, so uh, very strong spiritual foundations and cornerstones, uh, but very much middle child syndrome, <laughs> middle child of five, but she made life very simplistic. Um, she said things like, being friendly costs nothing. Um, your testimony is all that you have. Mm -hmm. um, some, some of these lines that, that I still remember, uh, if my kids give me some hassles, I say, just be friendly, it costs nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where did I get that? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, my mom uh, 
was very loving, very supportive, uh, worked half day while we were at school so that she could support us during the afternoons and mm -hmm. uh, supported my dad in such a big way. Um, and yeah, she played a big role in our lives, uh, my, my life and my brother's life okay. and, and kept the family together. I always felt sorry for her. She's the only woman <laughs> amongst the three men. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's a different, different yeah. dynamic. Uh, but yeah, she she always she was always there. Okay, and and your dad, I know for us men, you know, we have a very specific and 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 a unique relationship with our dad. So maybe just tell us a bit about your the relationship that you had with your dad. Yeah, I I struggled with my dad early on, and uh, luckily enough, we dealt with some of those problems. I was the second son. <laughs> uh, and felt for long that my brother, which was not much older than I am, was, he carried the name, he was the first born, he was the first son in the family, and I, I felt different for, for quite a while. And, and I struggled with that uh, identity uh, and that sort of thing. And, and I think my dad played a role in, you know, the structure of, that's the family, you know, the family name, the name bearer, and, and um, there was a time that that something shifted and clicked. My dad was very, very involved in ministry. And it was a place for him and I to connect as well. Uh, I was young and watched him serve in church. He ran the youth ministry. He ran the music ministry. Um, I don't know what, what there was to do at church he was involved in. So he was basically full-time in ministry with a job that paid the bills. Uh, and that showed me something of his heart, something of his, his service to the kingdom. Um, sometimes I resented that, that the church was, you know, in my mind, more important than our kids, uh, us kids, you know. And, um, but the, the journey was very, very strong. Uh, I remember so many life lessons that my dad taught me, and he wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, but later in life, uh, uh, when I started working, we connected on professional level. We were in the church band together and, and did ministry together. Uh, we could talk about things. He did a lot of reading and, and we challenged each other with, with thoughts and uh, theology and philosophy. Um, yeah, so he played a big, big role in my life. Uh, I ended up looking a lot like him now. <laughs> I ended up having a lot of his mannerisms. I look at myself in, in, on, on a Zoom call and I was, hey, but there's my dad. And so, so it's funny how the apple and the tree story mm. is, is, is uh, very truthful. But yeah, my, my journey with my dad was a big one and, and that ended up being one of the sadnesses in my life when, when he passed away uh, mm. after being very sick uh, at motor neuron disease and... Uh, yeah, a terrible, terrible 18-month uh, struggle with being ill. And uh, you know, like the songs say, uh, I wasn't there the morning my father passed away. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, she's, I can uh, imagine. I was just thinking back of my, my own father's, when, or when my father passed away, I was there. And I, I always heard the saying that uh, in Afrikaans, the, the last awesome I'd blossom. And I can still recall that last breath, and uh, it was it was terrible, you know. Just mm. just thinking back of of that, and just knowing that it's so final, eh? that then then yeah. that's that. You can't say or you can't fix anything after that. Uh, um, anyway, maybe just let's come back to your your mother. You said earlier that um, your mother told you one thing or a few things, but one of the things she left of you is the that you've only got your testimony, mm. um, and that's such a profound thing because it's it's actually a, a huge truth for us men as well is that you know towards our children towards our friends towards our business colleagues towards our wives they they look at our actions and they look at what we do so maybe just just tell us a bit about your testimony your relationship with the lord mm -hmm. um you know one question i like to ask men is to to understand when when did your relationship with jesus become personal yeah. You know, for a lot of us, for me, it was never personal until the age of 20, although I was in church for 20 years before that. 
So when did your relationship become personal? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, growing up in a very church-going home, uh, but my parents' involvement in church was not just we had a church. Mm-hmm. We were we were the church. You know, uh, they lived being the body, and um, so. I, I don't recall a time when I necessarily had to walk over this chasm <laughs> mm. and we were just committed in church. And then I think age 13, 14, the beginning teenage years, I made uh, a solid decision in my life. I know that I love God. I know that God loves me. And we can continue on this journey of me being, you know, believing in my dad's faith Mm. or I can make a decision and follow Jesus myself. And I was uh, baptized uh, in grade seven, standard five those years, Um, had various encounters, um, Holy Spirit encounters, Mm. youth camps, Sunday evening church, and and, and felt the realness of of God. And, And my dad was wired in such a way that he would he would always just reduce everything that happened. He said, but well, where's Jesus in the story? Mm. <laughs> it's just one important thing. Where's Jesus? Mm. If Jesus is not in the story, it's, it's not the story. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he taught us, sorry, some mm. good lessons in that. Uh, and, and I remember meeting Jesus mm. when I was young, uh, but it continued kind of on the same way of he stayed the same for me, although I changed. He was my friend. He was our shepherd. He was caring. Mm. Um, but I did not identify with the words, he pulled me out of the miry mm. clay because I never had that, that deep lostness before then. Um, and that was great through high school, through university. My mom's story about uh, the, the testimony was, um, uh, a little bit on the guilt trip side of things, but the sin management side. <laughs> we don't do the seven deadly sins, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. smoking, drinking, <laughs> drugs, uh, <laughs> movies, denims, and you know, all, mm-hmm. all, the, all the funny things that were listed as as those deadly sins, which were lifestyle uh, things, because they said, but people are going to talk, people are going to see you. Uh, you know, when, when we grew up, going to the movies was deemed to be, really, do you go? <laughs> Um, so, so the world's changed a bit, but uh, a, a part of that was uh, more guilt and sin management. Uh, but a big part of that was be true to what you say you are. And so, yeah, I, ha- I had the story of I didn't do these following things. Um, said no to being the host at the matric dance when I was in Standard 9 because I had to open the dance floor. And I said, sorry, I don't. And that was a little bit of the bad and the hurt from church, from legalism. Um, And and I had to find myself later on in life to say, but uh, is right and wrong the big issue or is following Jesus the big issue? (laughs) Uh, Big debate. Hmm. And now um, I know there's there's a few things that happened in your life which had quite a a big impact in your life. We'll we'll come to that now. Maybe just where where you are now, I mean, I know your family happily married to beautiful kids. Maybe just just give us some background on that. Yeah, um, it's the second time around, uh, and a lot of people don't know that. It's not a it's not a secret, uh, but a little bit of the privacy of my life is. Mm. Uh, I was married for just about ten years, and the wheels came off and came off in a big way. Um, I was in full-time ministry, I was working at a church, we were planning a huge building project, we, yeah, we were moving and shaking and, um, yeah, somehow I, I let myself, uh, down completely, um, and wasted, wasted a good marriage, um, there'd obviously been difficulties and troubles, but, um, yeah, I got all the t-shirts. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was a combination of so many things, but if I can not boastfully talk about it, but say with humility, uh, I, 
I somehow broke loose at age 30 and did what I was possibly thinking of doing at age 16 or 18 um, and tested all, all the boundaries uh, just because, I don't know, ego, mm. the stuff that men struggle with, uh, hard work, ego, uh, ambition, um, trying to be better and and yeah, I fell short. I, I fell over completely um, and lost lost my marriage, lost the ministry, um, and had to rebuild. And that's where I met a different Jesus. That's where I met a savior <laughs> from from just being my friend, wow. just being my shepherd, just being my comforter. Um, I had to come out of that deep hole mm. and uh, face myself, but then come and you know, confess, mm. <laughs> come and repent. Uh, had to face my parents who did not subscribe to that kind of life. Mm. And, and I had to go back to the people that I loved very much and told them, listen, I am sorry, I, I messed up, mm. but with a capital M. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's a big part of the sadness of the journey, mm. um, but God was faithful mm. and he did not turn his back on me and I have a second chance, but not second best. Mm. Uh, I wrote that in my journal about 15 years ago, shortly before I got married to, mm. to Elsebe and uh, I said, we serve a God of second chances, mm. uh, maybe even third, fourth, fifth chances. Mm but not of second best. Mm. Sure. And so so you've been married to Alsobi now for how many years? About 14. 14, 14 years. 14 years yeah. And you've got two children. Just maybe... Yeah, so I'm married. In fact, it's 16 years. Uh, just get the math right. 16 years now. Uh, I've got a 12-year-old daughter, uh, Esther. Um, and uh, no, 13-year-old daughter, Esther, and a 12-year-old son, Arvia. And joy, mm. joy and blessing, absolute joy and blessing. Uh, they serve with us in church. Uh, mm. One of my you know, red letter days of last year was when we had a kids service at church and they were both in the band with me in Elsie. Sure. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, it was like, I, I can die today because yeah. my kids are serving with wow. me. Uh, it was just beautiful. Wow. And then also you mentioned that there, there were some other events in your life which, which really impacted you deeply as a man. I know we all go through through different struggles and we deal with it differently. And, and one of the things that, that we need to deal with is, um, is, is just, just by talking about it. And, and that's why we're doing this also. Um, and, and one of the things that you mentioned also, you also so you went through a divorce and, and you, you went through all these different things in your relationship with, with Jesus. And then there was also a, a retrenchment. So maybe um, that, that's also something a lot of men face. And it's, uh, I haven't been through a retrenchment, but, but I can just think it's, uh, it's, it's an ego thing, a pride thing. It's for, for me, that, that's what it would be. So yeah. you know, how, how, did you, you know, how, how did you deal for, with, with that? No, that's a difficult one because um, I think the surprise of it is the big one. Mm. A lot of other things that happen to you, it's either life, my dad's illness, or uh, the divorce, a lot of my doing. Mm. <laughs> and the next thing, you're in a company, um, merger takes place with another company, uh, things happen so quickly and it's like, oh, there are too many senior people in the company. And suddenly it was a bad thing to be senior. <laughs> mm. uh, it was a bad thing to be qualified. And I thought, mm. oh, my qualification will always have me employed. And uh, yeah, that was a tough one, dealing with the, uh, really, can it be me? <laughs> mm. um, and, and then uh, the realization of, yes, it can happen to anyone. Mm. It's not by our, our own strength, our own qualification, our own works, our own... Things. Yeah, and we've got to work hard, but um, there's a lot of uh, variables out there that, that we don't control. Mm. And um, having gone through that, trying to figure out, but who is my source? Mm. <laughs> is my employer my source? Is my employer my provider? Or uh, am I 
my own provider and my ego, nothing can happen to me, I should be providing, uh, versus, yeah, it's in God's hands. Mm. And it's still a, it's still a tough one. <laughs> mm. Mm. It was about, yeah, I would think, eight, nine years ago, and mm. sometimes I still think about it, and like, man, why did that happen? Mm. Would I have been in a different place? Mm. Um, so that's a struggle in any man's life, but in my life it was... Uh, still part of the ego journey. Um, I think the divorce was an ego journey uh, or what led up to the divorce was. And, and I, I think God just kept chiseling away mm. on this dark side and this ego side. And, mm. and God sees around the corner. Mm. I would never have believed that, but three months, two months, three months after I got retrenched, I had an opportunity which grew into where I am now and I would not you know, change that for anything. Mm, sure. <laughs> it's as if God knew exactly what I needed to do, stepping stone. And mm. So, yeah, I'm very happy now, but it was mm. uh, a few days in the desert or a few months in the desert mm. before this happened. Mm. And I think also those those days and those weeks and those months in the desert are it's always not, not that bad always. Eh? It's actually, uh, I mean, I've also been in the desert a few times, but thinking back now, it's actually been good. You know, it's molding yeah. time, it's uh, it's thinking time, and it's really deepening your relationship with yourself and yeah. with the Lord. Eh? So so if I can pick up on that, and I, and I think it's critical to my story mm. um, and, and the journey that I had, and maybe I, I went to some anchor stories or verses in the Bible, mm. and, and still, until today, <laughs> if someone asks me, you want to preach about something? I said, I've got three sermons ready. Mm. <laughs> just, just tell me which one to go with. And 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 one of them would be Galatians uh, six. In the message says, make a careful exploration of who you are, and the work you've been given, and sink yourself into that. Mm. Sure. Don't compare yourself with someone else. We mm. each have the responsibility to do the creative best with the life that we've been given. Sure. So that that's. <laughs> Mm, wow. But the, 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 the cornerstone of that is knowing yourself. Make a careful exploration of who you are. And I think the world, I see my kids, I see media, social media, we're constantly compared with others <laughs> mm. and making ourselves fall short. Mm. And, and the freedom that I got with, but what is me? And who is me? <laughs> mm. And what must I do? Uh, so the time in the desert was amazing, was tough, not nice, but so good. Mm. If if you can spend time to find yourself. Mm. Um, and sometimes if everything is stripped away, you only look at yourself in the mirror and say, mm. and that's what I did. I was like, I sat with my journal in the morning and said, okay, what must I learn about myself today? And I found out a lot of things and some mm. of the quirks are I mean, there's things that I do that's stupid, and I'm sorry for my mm. <laughs> for some of it. Every now and then, it pops up in my relationship with my wife. But I said, mm. but I know this about myself. Mm. It's still not fixed, but it's at least aware. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 I think if someone can give their children a gift, that is to say, just be yourself, mm. know yourself, and then be yourself, mm. and then find the job that God had for you, find mm. the work that you were created for. Mm. And, and sink yourself into that mm. with passion. Sure. And Rian, then maybe the, 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 the tough one, the tough thing for me as well is, you know, my, my father's passing and, and you did mention that it also played a big, a big role in your life and it had a big impact on your life. So maybe, you know, maybe just tell us about that. It was by far the most, uh, yeah, enormous thing that happened to me. I, I did not know how big that was. Before I, my dad passed away, I, I was even officiating at one or two friends' dad's funerals. I, I, I helped bury a good friend of mine's dad and I thought, this is life and I'm there to support him and I think what, I think I know what he's going through but if I do a nice job and and the morning that my dad passed, and it wasn't a surprise, we knew he was terminal. Um, it felt cataclysmic in my, in my spirit and in my mind. And 
yeah, you know, it, it it felt as as though a big connection with myself died. Mm. It felt as if yeah, I woke up the next morning and and suddenly felt ten years older in responsibility. <laughs> mm. I was forty five, but my dad had always been there as mm. an umbrella. I felt that the umbrella was gone. Mm. If someone comes now, I have to fight. Mm. I don't fight shoulder to shoulder with him. I now fight. You know, that, that feeling of, man, I am now the man. And I've got a brother and, and, and we take care of our mom together. But, but it just had a sense of, okay, this is a next dimension of growing up. Um, the sadness of him not knowing my kids, well, they were three and four. Um, so they were young when he passed away. Mm. It's, it's the sense of the future changed um, so big. So I, I think that was one of the biggest things that happened in my life as far as a gaping hole. <laughs> mm. um, and some people say, but it's so wonderful. You had a great relationship with your dad. Mm. Uh, and yes, it is. So I've got, I've got the blessing of, of the 45 years that I had with him. But because it was so good, the loss is, is so big. So, so the two sides of that coin of great relationship, not perfect, but yeah, I, I had the blessing of sitting with my dad about a week before he died. And people ask me, did you tell your dad everything that you wanted to say? I said, Probably not. But I heard everything that I needed to hear. Mm, sure. um, which no one asks you. <laughs> mm. Did you say everything you wanted? Did you say your piece? No, I heard my piece. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was it was tough. It was really tough. I wrote wrote him a big poem. Um, a big poem, a poem for for his eulogy, and his life was Jesus. Mm. Um, he gave his life to church. Uh, about a thousand people showed up at his funeral, and a lot of them I did not know. But he sowed love and righteousness and joy and peace and kingdom into people's lives, mm -hmm. um, and and that was for me great to see. But there's still mm -hmm. a loss. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks for for sharing that, Rian. And, and Rian, maybe just in, in closing, I know um, you know there's there's still so much we can we can talk about, and so much that I still want to ask you. But we'll keep that for another round. But um, I remember when my dad passed away as well. You've got your own kids now. You've got a wife. You you need to provide. It's like you were saying. You don't have someone who's fighting with you, but. At some stage, you have to make that decision. It's like you're going into back into a change room at half time during a rugby game, and you know you can't hide. You know, you know, you have to go out there and fight the fight. Mm -hmm. And and how did you do that? Maybe just in short, as a summary, and 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 what role did did your relationship with the Lord play in that? You getting back onto the field and fighting the fight. Yeah, I think uh, a big lesson. I learned was what my brother said shortly after my dad died. He said, the way my dad lived and taught us um, made us not scared of being dead. <laughs> mm. We're not scared of death. And, mm. and um, if, if you realize that death is part of life and yes, there's sadness and loss, but if you contextualize it in eternity, suddenly God comes into play. Suddenly, mm what we do here comes into play and and for me that was i've got to stand up and face the world but also leave a legacy mm. also fight the good fight also mm. do what i need to do um yeah so that was that was the saving grace we, mm. yes death is terrible um but we should not live as though we are scared of being dead mm. <laughs> My dad said, I'm, I'm not afraid of being dead, but I'm afraid of dying. <laughs> mm. uh, but my dad taught us to not be scared of death because death means Jesus. Mm. Uh, and that sounds very cliche, mm. but, but if eternity and, and eternal thinking is part of your day-to-day -day life, suddenly a lot of things change. Um, oh. So yeah, um, eternal perspective, eternal perspective gave me some 
Yeah, some bigger day-to-day -day perspective and then purpose. I teach my kids three things. Um, I pray that, I teach that, I talk about that, I research that, and that's character, in, uh, uh, identity, uh, and purpose. Mm. So, Character, identity, and purpose. If I can leave my kids with intact character, identity, knowing who they are in Christ, and purpose. We all need to be light and salt. We can't just be, <laughs> mm. we can't just know who we are. We've got to work who we are. We've got to be who we are. Rian, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate you. Appreciate what you've, uh, what you've shared with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.